Hello everyone and welcome to Mass Analytics Masterclasses in Marketing Mix Modeling. So today's course is about data processing. Last time we have seen how important it is to look and explore the data that you have collected. Today we will be looking at what are the data transformations that need to be applied in order to enhance the quality of your modeling. The content of today is split into four sections. The first one is an introduction to data processing. The second one is about calendar variables. In the third section, we'll be covering processed variables. And the last section will be dedicated to chain processing or processing variables in sequence. Introduction to data processing. Referring back to our standard marketing mix modeling workflow, we are now moving on to the third phase of our marketing mix modeling project phases, which is the data processing. In master, this is done through the module process where you can create all the transformations that are needed as part of this phase. We have already established in the previous course the importance of exploring your data, whether it's a scatter plot or a correlation function or looking at univariate statistics, all these components are key to the stage of data processing. In fact, during the data exploration, you discover your data. And that's where you start formulating your hypothesis on what are the extra and additional variables that I need to create in order to test specific hypotheses. For example, earlier on or in the previous course, we have seen that there is a lagged or a decayed effect of your TV variable. Here in data processing, you need to think about creating your ad stock in order to model that. So the idea really for processing is to create additional and extra variables and those variables will come from the exploration phase. You then test them through the modeling stage in order to either confirm or refute the hypothesis that, the hypothesis that you have in mind. Please make sure that you do this exercise up front and not wait to the last minute where you think that it's the model results that will make you discover things about your data. In data processing, we distinguish between calendar variables and other processed variables. What is the difference between the two? Calendar variables are those variables that are created from scratch. So they are not created on the basis of the raw variables that I have in my project. For example, creating dummies or trends, these are classified as calendar variables. Now, on the other hand, the other process variables would be transformations that we would be applying to raw variables. For example, if I have a TV GRP and I apply a decay to it, I obtain a processed variables because actually to create those variables, I needed the raw variable to start with. The other processed transformation would be things like diminishing returns, lags, seasonality, adding variables together, splitting variables, etc. etc. Calendar variables, dummy variables, or dummies. These variables are generally created in order to model events, whether they are known or unknown. Please be very careful when you use your dummy variables because you do not want to create or overcreate those variables, especially when you don't know the source of these dummies, because you could run the risk of overfitting your model. An example of the dummy variables would be, for example, I have an out of stock, and that happened three times a year, that I'll be creating then three dummies to model these out stock events. Trends and part trends. Trends and part trends are created in order to model the gradual increase or decrease in your model KPI. As an example, I can cite the launch of a new product, the delisting of a product. In the retail sector, it could be modeling the opening of a new store or even the closure of a store. The calendar variable periodic is generally used in order to model a frequent event. For example, payday. People get paid around the 25th of the month and then we can expect that there is an increase in the consumption when people get paid. So I would want to create a variable that takes one each time that, for example, the 25th of the month happen in that particular week. In that case, I'll be using the periodic transformation in order to create a frequent variable for that. 
Another example, if I have a seasonality during a specific month of the year, say for example February, in that case I'll be creating a periodic seasonality in the month of February. If I am modeling three years worth of data, I will have three sequence of those using the periodic transformation. Processed variables. Processed variables are created either out of the raw variables that you have collected as part of the kickoff meeting and the data request, or it could be the calendar variables that we were describing earlier on that you then decide to apply another transformation to. Now, one of the things that I really encourage you to do before you create any processed variable is to graph the raw variable against the dependent variable. And based on what you see, you try to choose one of the transformation that would be adapted to your raw variable and that would create the shape that you are after for modeling later on. Decay. One of the most popular transformation in marketing mixed modeling is actually the decay transformation or what is commonly called ad stock. So what is the th theory behind ad stock? Ad stock is as simple as saying that there is kind of prolonged or a carryover effect of your advertising activity. So when you advertise at time T, that particular activity in time T won't only have an impact on your consumption at time T, but it will also carry over to the, pre, to the, to the next weeks. And the way we do it mathematically is that we will think of it as a stock of advertising. So my stock of advertising today is influenced by two factors. The first one is how much activity or how much advertising I'm receiving on that particular week, plus a carryover effect that, that is coming from the stock of advertising from previous weeks. And that decay will determine how much memory I am taking with me week on week. Let's look at an illustration of that. In this slide, we illustrate the concept of ad stock. So here I have my dependent variable that is graphed in red alongside my raw TVGRP that is graphed in blue. Now I have created two types of ad stock. In the first one, which is the yellow one, I'm assuming a memory decay of 10%. So here, if you notice, the carryover stretched over a long period because actually the consumer function forgets only 10% of the message and there is 90% of the message that is taken over week on week. However, if we look at the second transformation, which is the 40%, we see that actually the stock of advertising that is taken over week on week is less than in the first case, case of 10%. And you can clearly see that the green line falls probably two or three weeks post the stopping of the TV activity. So this is an illustration of how you can create different decays or different ad stock. And the idea is that you would create different variations of your decay. And then when you move to the modeling stage, you will choose the best variable out of all the created decays that better matches the variations that you see in your sales. Another variation of the decay function or the ad stock is to specify a cutoff point. What does this mean? It means that the user decides to stop or cut the tail starting from a certain point. So all what you need to do is to enter what is your cutoff point and then it will, the software will automatically delete or cut that tail that you think is not relevant in the context of the modeling of your brand. Lag transformation. Lag transformation is generally applied to shift your variable in order to, for example, model a shifted effect or a delayed effect of your variable. One of the examples that I can cite here is promotions. So what one would expect is that when your promotions are on, your sales will be increasing as a result of that. However, depending on the strength of the promotion, that could easily result in drop in sales in subsequent weeks. For example, if I'm running a buy one, get one free, what generally tends to happen is that customers will stock those products, which means that they will be bringing forward the sales that they will be doing in the subsequent weeks. So what I need to do here is to create a lag of the promotion variable where the raw variable of promotion will be 
use it in order to model the immediate effect of your promotions and your lagged version of your promo variable will be used in order to model that brought forward sales and potentially a decrease in your sales line as a result of the promotion that we have done one week before or two weeks before. Diminishing returns. Diminishing returns is actually one of the most important transformations in the context of marketing mix modeling. If you want to create an optimization as part of your project, and if this is an objective that you have agreed upon in the kickoff meeting, then it is very, very important for you at this stage to create your diminishing returns. Why? Remember the lags and the decay transformation that we talked about earlier on? Those are linear transformation. If I don't build in a saturation effect or a diminishing returns on top of those, then my curve will still linear. And that means that for any optimization algorithm, it will always allocate the budget to the channel that will have the highest slope. Therefore, to be capable of getting your clients a sound optimization, you need at this stage to build in a diminishing return or a saturation effect in every single channel that you are modeling. There are a number of mathematical transformations that ensure that result to you. For example, the exponential function or the addback function or the A10 function. All these functions are capable of creating that nice concave shape to your curve and those shapes will enable you to run optimization later on. Chain processing or combining processors. Chain processing is about applying different processors in sequence to the same row or calendar variable. Here I can cite two examples. Typical one that we always use in marketing mix modeling is to take the TV, for example, spend or GRP, to which you will apply the decay function that we talked about in order to create your ad stock. And then to your ad stock, you apply another processor that is in this case diminishing returns. So you are capable at the end to optimize over your TV, outdoor, search, etc., etc. The second example I can give you today is actually seasonality. So a typical transformation, again in MMM, is to take or to create a seasonal factor and then you would smooth that seasonal factor either using a median filter or a moving average and that would give you a nice shape that you could then use inside your model as an explanatory variable. A robust model that makes both statistical and business sense should really mimic how your customers have behaved, should be realistic, and to that you need to create additional variables or apply transformations to your raw variables in order to achieve that. We have seen today that we have two types of categories of transformation. The first one is called calendar variables, which are variables that you'll be creating from scratch and that are not linked to your raw variables, like for example dummies or trends. And the second type of variable that we have looked at would be transformations that you would be applying to either the calendar variables or the row variables to create additional ones. Typical transformations would be creating lags, for example, for promotions, creating ad stock for your TV and, 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 and also your media variables. And also we talked about the importance of diminishing returns. Something else that we talked about today is the chain processing where sometimes applying one processor is not enough and we need to apply those processes in sequence. A typical transformation would be a media channel to which you create an ad stock or you apply the decay transformation and then after that you built into it a saturation effect through your diminishing return function. Now we have created those variables. And just to give you a sense of the figures here, generally a, mar a marketing mix modeling project would start with 50, 100 raw variables, but at the end of the data processing stage, you will find yourself with thousands and thousands of variables being created for the modeling stage. Before I end up this course, I would like to insist on the fact that processing and modeling is an iterative process. So you create variables, additional ones, 
you test them in the model and then you look at your residuals and based on what you see on your model you can decide to move back to the processing and create additional variables to test in your model. You do that iteratively until you stabilize your model and you are happy with the size and the random nature of your residuals. Thank you very much and see you in the next course where we'll be talking about modeling and regression analysis.